Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle. Each week I'll be uploading a 5 minute video explaining as simply as possible the world around us. Today in 5 Minute Geography we're going to be looking at is it possible or not to predict a volcanic explosion. A big thank you to Luke and Daniel for suggesting this topic. Stick around to the end of the video for another 5 Minute Geography Fact of the Week. Scientists are constantly trying to predict volcanic activity so that they can make up time to evacuate surrounding areas and prevent the loss of life. Most of the active volcanoes in the world are monitored constantly, some around the clock. While it is very difficult to pinpoint exactly when an eruption will happen, predictions are becoming more precise. Scientists were able to precisely predict the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Luckily, most people living in the regions heeded the warnings and fled to safety. This included about 20,000 people who lived in the immediate vicinity of the volcano and would have been affected by the pyroclastic cloud. So how do we predict volcanic eruptions? Well, there are certain things we can look out for. The first thing being the change in the shape of the volcano. Before an eruption, magma moves into an area beneath the volcano. As it rises into the cone, it pushes outwards and can cause the surface of the volcano to bulge, kind of like a blister on your skin. Even a slight bulge or a change of slope in the side of the volcano may indicate that an eruption is likely to happen. Scientists use laser beams and satellite images to take accurate measurements of any changes that occur to the shape of the volcano. Scientists and geologists also look at heat and gas emissions from the volcano itself. The presence of hot magma increases the temperatures of the surrounding rock. This may cause snow or ice on the volcano to begin to melt, triggering a flood or a lahar. As the magma rises closer to the surface, the gases expand and begin to escape. The main volcanic gases include sulfur dioxide and steam. Any large increase in the amount of gases means that there is more magma closer to the surface and that a volcanic eruption could be expected at any time. Lake Niles is a water-filled crater that formed as a result of volcanic eruption over 500 years ago. On the 21st of August 1986, a large deposit of carbon dioxide seeped from the lake killing over 1,700 people and 3,500 livestock. Since this disaster, monitoring gas emissions has become a regular part of volcanic predictions. Another way of predicting volcanic activity is through seismic activity. As magma collects in the magma chamber, it generates great heat. This cracks the surrounding rock, giving off small tremors, and these tremors can be monitored by seismometers. Any sudden increase in the number or strength of these tremors can indicate that an eruption is about to occur. In predicting volcanic eruptions, we also look at the history of previous eruptions. Scientists are now better able to interpret the record of past eruptions. They use this to predict when a new eruption is likely to happen. Studying the history of volcanoes in this detail only began after the eruption of Mount St. Helen in 1980. It is extremely difficult to predict volcanic eruptions as each has a different pattern and shows different signs before erupting. Not all volcanoes are the same. Accurate predictions require volcanologists to carefully monitor a volcano's vital signs. Despite these difficulties, volcanic prediction has developed greatly over the past number of decades. The eruptions of Mount St. Helen in 1980 and Mount Pinatubo in 1992 and Mount Merepi in 2010 were all successfully predicted. These predictions helped to save the lives of tens of thousands of people living close to the volcano. The most formidable volcanoes are called supervolcanoes. A supervolcanic eruption can rain hellfire across thousands of miles and cause worldwide climatic changes such as a drop in global temperature due to the release of tons of ash particles into the atmosphere. These monsters rear their ugly heads thankfully only a few hundred thousand years. However, one of the biggest is in Yellowstone National Park and scientists say it may be due for another eruption 
sometime soon. As always, I've been Stephen Doyle with 5 Minute Geography. Please hit the like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like me to cover a specific topic, please just pop it in the comment section below.